This is Dr. T. Siva Prasad, Professor of Mechanical Engineering from Lord's Institute of Engineering and Technology. Now, I would like to explain about the machining technology. So, generally in manufacturing, whenever the raw material is given to convert into the finished part, the total manufacturing processes that are available can be divided into four different groups. The first one is a casting or foundry technology. The second one is a forming or metalworking technology. And the third one is a, the fabrication technology or metal joining technology. And the fourth one is a machining technology or metal cutting the technology. So, whenever the raw material is given to make it a finished part, one or two of these particular groups can be selected and then you can go for the one. Particularly the first three groups that is the casting, forming and fabrication technologies. These three technologies will be dealt by the students in the second year itself in the lab manufacturing technology one lab. But uh, in the third year we are going to <coughs> have an exposure to the machining technology. So <coughs> generally this machining technology is preferred whenever the finished product is demanding good surface finish, means high surface finish and close dimensional tolerances. Because in casting, forming and fabrication technologies, the final product may not have the required surface finish and close dimensional tolerances. Therefore, the excess material in those particular components produced by the casting, forming and fabrication should be removed by the machine tools in this particular technology. So, the removal of the excess material in the form of the chips will be done by this particular one. By removing that one, the required surface finish and the tolerances can be obtained in this particular technology. Particularly, whenever a component is given, its life, its quality and survivability in the actual working mainly depends on the surface finish and uh, the dimensional tolerances. If a component has a very good surface finish, it will survive for longer time or the life of the component will be definitely better. Similarly, if the dimensional tolerances given for a particular component are very close to the basic size, then also it will exhibit a long life in their functioning. Therefore, 90 to 95 percent of the components used in engineering applications will be subjected to the machining technology. That's why compared to the other three technologies, the machining technology plays quite a role. So without machining technology, it is not possible to produce the components with required surface finish and dimensional tolerances that are demanded by the various engineering applications. So, so in this machining technology, the excess material is removed in the form of the fine chips with the help of three types of tools. The first tool required for machining is the cutting tool, second tool is the machine tool and third tool is the holding tool. So without these three tools, the machining is not possible. So the cutting tool is the one which is direct contact with the workpiece removes the excess material in the form of the chips by shear deformation process. That is the function of the first tool cutting tool. So cutting tool is a simple one but without proper cutting tool and its material properties are selected <laughs> appropriately it is not possible to make the machining effectively and efficient. So therefore the first and important tool in the machining technology the cutting tool and uh, its technology separate theory of metal cutting is a totally different uh, subject. So how the tool is made, what is the geometry of this particular cutting tool and whenever it is in uh, machining what type of different chips are produced, what are the conditions for the production of those particular chips, what are the advantages by certain chips and what are the disadvantages by certain other things and what are the forces generated, what is the temperature generated, how to measure these particular aspects and all all these aspects will be dealt in a metal cutting aspects that is uh, the cutting tool technology is a separate technology. And the second tool required in this particular technology is uh, the machine tool. That is whenever the workpiece is given and the cutting tool is given, there should be a relative motion between the tool and workpiece 
without relative motion it is not possible to <laughs> remove the material in the form of the chips so suppose if you take the hand working operation like a filing operation in the first year students are exposed to this particular filing operation you know the trade of uh, fitting in the fitting trade they do the filing that is uh, to get the smooth surfaces by removing smaller amount of material from the given a uh, metallic uh, materials plates generally so uh, 5 mm thick plates will be given from that uh, to get the required shape in the fitting uh, filing is it so you take that particular filing operation it is a machining is it not because you are removing the excess material in the form of small chips therefore there will be all three tools present in that particular uh, filing what are the three tools that is the cutting tool what is the cutting tool in a filing operation the file itself the cutting tool and the, what is the holding tool that is uh, the <coughs> bench wise what we are using in which we are clamping the work piece that is the holding tool but uh, what is the machine tool there that is uh, if you keep the file on the work piece material will not be removed it has to move forward and uh, backward with a certain force who is doing that one the human being we are also being therefore we are machine tools there because we are giving the required relative motion so in a filing operation work piece is stationary but the tool is that is the file is having a forward and a linear motion reciprocating motion it is a having okay so therefore the person is providing that particular reciprocating motion that's why it is called the machine so therefore the second tool purpose is a it has to provide required relative motion between the cutting tool and work piece with required power that is called the machine tool or you can say that is the function of a machine as you can see there are varieties of the machine tool suppose the lathe machine is there drilling machine is there milling machine is there so why one machine is different from other means the type of relative motions required in this particular machine tools are different so therefore in a lathe operation depending on the relative motions required the various mechanisms are included whereas in a milling machine the relative motions are different therefore to provide those relative motions the mechanism is totally different and machine tool is different okay so therefore once you have a appropriate cutting tool then a machine tool is required in hand working operations the person itself becomes the machine tool whereas in a machine in general machining technology varieties of the machine tools are there which we are going to we have exposure now and the third one is a holding as i told you the work piece is to be held rigidly the tool is to be held rigidly and without holding them with the required force the relative position between the tool and work piece while machining is not a possible therefore all three tools are equally important so machine tools are costing very high cutting tools are relatively very is a low cost but it doesn't mean that without cutting tool with the machine tool itself we can make the machine no so all three tools are equally important in a machining technology okay so in this particular lab this is a machine tools lab we are now going to have the complete understanding about the different machine tools and out of all these machine tools the first and important machine tool is the lathe machine so in machine tools the first and important machine tool is a lathe machine because the number of operations that can be done on this particular machine tool are very high like cylindrical turning taper turning knurling thread cutting like that varieties of the operations are possible that's why it is called most general purpose machine tool okay so this lathe of course the classification we can have lot of varieties of the machine tools are there but uh, i would like to explain about the this engine lathe that is the generally used in a, most of the industries this uh, engine lathe and coming to the the main assemblies by this particular as i already told you any machine tool will have different mechanisms so that those mechanisms will be useful to provide the required relative motion between the cutting tool and the work piece so particularly in this lathe machine the relative motions are the work piece will have a continuous rotary motion whereas the cutting tool will have a linear motion parallel to the axis perpendicular to the axis and inclined to the axis so this is the relative motion work piece has a rotary motion whereas the cutting tool is having the 
all linear motions parallel to the axis, perpendicular to the axis and inclined to the axis. So for this purpose various assemblies are developed in this particular lathe machine. So now the first and important assembly in this particular one is the first one is the bed. So this is the bed is the first assembly which accommodates all other assemblies of the machine. Okay, so this bed is generally consists of this particular guideways which will be useful for the movement of other, other parts of the lathe machine. Okay, so generally the, because it is accommodating all other assemblies on that particular one, the material that is going to be selected for this particular bed should have the good compressive strength because all the loads coming on that is a <laughs> compressive loads only. So it should have the good compressive strength because it is a lot of parts are moving on this good wear resisting properties it should have and good lubricating properties or self lubricating properties it should have and uh, damping capacity. If there is any variation in the loads coming on that there should not be any vibrations. So the material should absorb that particular one that we call as a damping capacity. So therefore the material that we are going to choose for, the, for this particular bed should have the damping capacity, good compression strength and good wear resisting properties. So all these properties are mostly having by, by the grey cast iron. That's why mostly beds are made by grey cast iron and of course the manufacturer whenever the cast iron is the material for making a particular component or particular assembly, its manufacturing process is definitely casting your technology. So therefore the bed is made with a grey cast iron with the required shape and all of course the shape and other things will be decided in the design of this particular bed by considering varieties of the loads that are coming on this particular one and this is the <coughs> compact very compact <coughs> bed provided for this particular one which will not allow any vibrations or deflections during the machine and another important aspect on this particular bed is uh, guideways as I have shown it uh, the guideways so there are two sets of guideways one is one set is uh, that is internal guideways that is uh, one inverted V and one uh, flat guideway and uh, another set also one inverted V one uh, flat guideways okay these are the outer guideways these are the inner uh, guideways so these inner guideways are useful for the mo movement of the tail stop tail stock has to move from forward and backward according to the length of the workpiece to support it. Therefore, the movement of this particular tail stock is guided by this internal guideways that is one inverted V and one flat guideway. Whereas the outer guideways, one flat and one inverted V will be useful for guiding the movement of the carriage. Carriage another assembly we are going to see but the carriage movement is guided by outer guideways and tail stock movement is guided by the inner guideways. Okay, so like that the first and important assembly is the bed made of a grey cast iron consists of two sets of the guideways. One internal set is useful for the movement of the tail stock whereas the outer guideways are useful for the movement of the Carriage. Okay, so that is the first assembly, and then the next important assembly is the head stock. This is the head stock, the purpose of which is generally arranged on the left side of this particular lathe machine. Okay, so the purpose of this particular head stock is to provide the required rotary motion. As I already told you, the two relative motions required in this particular lathe machine are workpiece should rotate and tool should have the linear motion and workpiece rotation is given by this particular head stock. The purpose of the head stock is to rotate the workpiece with required velocity. Okay, but uh, all workpieces cannot be rotated with same velocity. The, the, of course, that depends on the workpiece material, that depends on the type of operation you are doing, the speed is going to change. To change that particular speed, sir, the head stock will have all this carrying mechanism, everything is in included in this particular head stock. Of course, how, how to arrange those particular head stock gates, uh, gear, gear train arrangement design is a separate aspect. Uh, the machine tool design aspects it will come, but uh, at present you know that the purpose of this head stock is to provide the required relative motions. Uh, 
in the relative motion, the workpiece rotation is provided by this particular one. And uh, there is not uh, one speed provided by this. Varieties of the speeds will be provided because while machining different materials and uh, while doing different operations, uh, the different rotary speeds are required. All those are provided by this particular uh, headstock. That is the purpose of the headstock. And uh, after this headstock, the next important assembly, of course, the simple assembly is the tailstock. The purpose of the tailstock is uh, to support the lengthy jobs. Suppose the job length is very small, whenever you are cutting, it won't deflect. It will have, uh, because the length is small, because of the forces, no deflection, perfect uh, uh, finished part we are going to get. But uh, suppose the length of the workpiece is very large. Then without proper support, if you do the machining in this lathe operation, definitely there will be deflections and finally you are not going to get the exact cylindrical shape on this particular workpiece. That's why lengthy workpieces need to be supported at the other end to eliminate the deflection during the machining operation or to increase the accuracy of the machine. For that particular purpose only, mainly this tile stock. This tile stock with having a center, with the help of this center, the workpiece is going to be supported. Of course, this tile stock can be, depending on the length of the job, the tile stock can be arranged anywhere on this particular lathe bed. So, that is the one. So, after this particular one, the another very important assembly is the carriage. This is the carriage. That is, the purpose of the carriage is uh, to provide all linear motions for the cutting tool. All linear motions for the cutting tool. That is, first linear motion is uh, <coughs> parallel to the axis. You see now, it is moving parallel to the axis. Okay, so that is called the <coughs> saddle. First one is the saddle. Next one is the cross line. So that is uh, perpendicular to the axis. To provide the motion perpendicular to the axis the saddle is a after on the saddle we have the cross line on the cross line we are having the compound slide this compound slide for a, providing inclined motions to the cutting tool with respect to the axis of this particular like that the carriage is have, purpose is to provide three linear motions one is parallel to the axis that is by saddle the saddle is directly mounted on the bed base Okay, on this particular saddle, we have a cross line that will provide the linear motion perpendicular to the axis. And then on that, we have the compound slide that will be with the help of this uh, wheel, which if you rotate, it will provide the inclined motion for taper turning and uh, other operations it will be used. Okay, like this, the <coughs> lathe machine having the main assemblies, bed, headstock, tailstock and carriage. Function of the bed is to support all other assemblies. Function of the headstock is to provide the required uh, rotary motions for the workpiece. And uh, tailstock main function is uh, to support the lengthy jobs so that the job will not deflect uh, during the machining. And then carriage assembly, its main purpose is uh, <laughs> to provide all linear motions parallel to the axis, perpendicular to the axis and inclined to the axis. And particularly if you see here, <coughs> once you are rotating this particular wheel, it is moving parallel to the axis. So what is the mechanism involved here? That is rotary motion is converted into linear motion. So there are uh, three mechanisms which will convert the rotary into linear. One is the rack and pinion mechanism. Second one is the screw and nut mechanism. Third one is the <coughs> crank and slotted lever mechanism. These are the three mechanisms which will convert linear into rotary or rotary into linear. Of course, generally providing the rotary motion is very easy with the help of the electrical motors. But the converting, whenever you want a linear motion, converting the rotary into the linear is very important. And now here, this linear motion, the saddle movement is due to the rack and pinion. So at the end of this one, there is a small pinion is attached to this one. The pinion is attached to the rack. This rack is, you can see, below the bed, a continuous rack. Rack is attached to this one. So therefore, once you are rotating this particular pinion with the help of this wheel, rack is fixed. Therefore, the pinion itself is moving forward and backward. Okay, so that is what the rack and pinion mechanism. And in the, in the, if you see this cross line, 
Once you are rotating this particular one, it is moving forward and backward. So here the mechanism involved is a screw and neck mechanism. Screw and neck mechanism. So this is a screw. Once you are rotating this particular screw, screw is rotated by this particular hand wheel and then it is attached to the nut inside. The screw is a fixed position. The nut is moving forward and backward. The nut itself moving forward and back. So that is a screw and nut mechanism. Similarly, in this compound slide also, once you rotate this one, it is moving forward and backward. Here also, screw and nut mechanism. So mostly, in almost all machine tools, we are having this screw and nut mechanism. Rack and pinion, of course, in the lathe machine and in the drilling machine and other machines also, rack and pinion you find. But this crank and slot and lever mechanism is only available in the case of the shaping machine. No other machine it will has this uh, particular crank and slotted lever mechanism to convert the rotary into the linear uh, motion. So these are the main assemblies of this particular uh, lathe machine.